Indigenous Voices, a podcast that highlights the perspective of indigenous peoples of the world. Welcome to the third episode of Indigenous Voices, a podcast produced by the FSC Indigenous Foundation. On this occasion, we will be talking about the FSC Indigenous Foundation goals, challenges, vision, and programs. Today, we are joined by Francisco Sousa, Managing Director, FSC Indigenous Foundation. Francisco is an economist and member of the Apurina Indigenous Peoples of the Brazilian Amazon. For 30 years, Francisco has contributed to initiatives in 40 countries in areas connected to indigenous peoples, forests, sustainable development, climate change, and nature-based solutions. With HIVOS, WWF, Rainforest Alliance, IADV, IDRC, private foundations, and governments, he previously supported inclusive conservation, right-based development, and indigenous-based solutions in over 100 million hectares of forest worldwide. He works collaboratively with indigenous peoples who manage a territory of over 1 billion hectares in all regions of planet. He is currently a member of LEAF Coalition's IPLC advisory panel with Emergent. Francisco has a PhD in environmental science and a master's degree in tropical conservation and development. Francisco, we are pleased to have you here. Today, we would like to know more about the Indigenous Foundation, its visions, goals, challenges, and programs. So to start the conversation, we would like to know what is your motivation and history that led you to become Managing Director of the FSC Indigenous Foundation? Okay, thank you very much. First, let me to thank, you, thank you for the opportunity to have this very important conversation today. So to talk about motivation, in the history behind my 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 the position that I have nowadays as the manager director of the FSC Indigenous Foundation, would it be important for for me to to go back to think about the jungle, the jungle in the Amazon? I came from the Amazon uh, region to assume this position from Brazil. It, the the challenge that we have faced there for the past centuries and centuries is the 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 challenge common also in other different parts of the planet faced by indif different indigenous peoples uh, from Africa, from Asia, North America, Oceania. And the challenge that my people, my my community in the Amazon have faced is connected to social dilemma, political dilemma, violence, with uh, huge impact on their rights. It also impact on the forest. The forest is quite important for for the people there, for my community, other indigenous brothers and sisters in the Amazon. As I have working with different organizations, uh, with WWF, EVO, Rainforest Alliance, and also with multilateral organizations, including the USID, the World Bank, World Bank Inter-American Bank, was clear to me uh, almost uh, 15 years ago, or even before, that for us to think about solution, to think about alternative way to support indigenous people, not only in the, the in the Brazilian Amazon, in my community, we need to create opportunity for cross sectors collaboration. So any solution that we could find to support indigenous people, we should bring together the government, we should bring together the private sectors, the NGO, the other sectors to work with us. So when I assumed this position, I saw a huge opportunity because the FSC has invested in three decades of supporting indigenous people, bring indigenous people to participate on the governance of the, the Forest Social Council as an international organization. They put the indigenous people at the center. And they provide the, the, the indigenous people for the space for them to guide the organization to promote indigenous based solutions. That's the target ambition for the Indigenous Foundation. It's for us not only to think about single solution, because it's not possible to think single solution as the way to achieve a successful uh, alternative to protect the forest and also the environmental. Uh, 
e also to support the protection of the human rights, to protect the indigenous women, uh, the girls, the, the men that live in my, in my community in the Amazon or other part of the planet. There is no way for us to reduce poverty. There is no way for us to, see, to think about a single organization to, to provide a solution for everything. That's the opportunity, that's the, the challenge that I, I, I saw when I assumed this position as the manager director for the Indigenous Foundation. That's a challenge, the opportunities, especially today, is quite important for us to incorporate the Indigenous people, because if you don't incorporate Indigenous people to face it, to over in space, for us to think about global solution for the global challenge, I, I, I would say that any solution is going to fail. That's the core motivation why I accept this position. That's the core motivation why I see the opportunity as uh, the manager direct for the, for, the, for, the, for the organization. Thank you so much, Francisco. You're connecting right now our second questions because you have talked about your opportunities and challenges. So in that aspect, what is your long-term vision for the FFC Indigenous Foundation and what are the main challenges faced? Yeah, that, uh, that's a very key uh, 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 aspect for us to think strategically the Indigenous Foundation. The Indigenous Foundation is the ambition in terms of the ambition, in terms of the vision. We are connected to, to see possibility for us to create in a very collaborative way alternative solution to face challenge the opportunity faced by indigenous people worldwide. We are talking here about violence against the rights. We are talking here about the deforestation, millions and millions of hectares of the tropical forest, for instance, that we, we lost every year. It also, those are the dozens of the lives that we, 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 we lost of indigenous brothers and sisters worldwide. Of course, when we think in terms of the solution, the vision of the Indigenous Foundation, forests, lands, and waters from Indigenous people are become more and more important for us to think solution. But at the same time, we should think forests, lands, the rights of the Indigenous people, the ecosystem services under under a strong threat threats worldwide. But also. When we think in terms of the opportunity, less than one percent of the money that we have nowadays to provide direct to, to focus on, on on forests, to for, focus on environmental conservation, less than one percent of this money is managed directly by indigenous people organization. He also. The vision of the Indigenous Foundation is connected to the fact that the indigenous people are the managers, the guardians of twenty-five percent of the planet. If for before the, the indigenous foundation, indigenous, indigenous people are the, the global providers. They are the guardians of an ancestral solution to global challenge. The indigenous foundation, we are working to catalyze, to scale up indigenous lead solution, it to, to connect that those solution to at least 1 billion hectares of the indigenous territory in the planet. To achieve that target goal, that that, that mission, that vision, the Indigenous Foundation has worked to, to provide capacity development for, for Indigenous people organization, non-Indigenous people organization as well. We are, have worked have work to, to promote solution connected to Indigenous culture landscape. We also uh, incorporate climate change to, to meet the expectation of the Indigenous peoples on the ground for them to promote holistic way to manage the, the nature, but also the Indigenous Foundation are working connect to the, to, to the vision of the organization to promote Indigenous economy, to create financial and market-based solution for, for support Indigenous self-development, Indigenous self-governance and self-alliance. That the target ambition and the vision that we are working on at the Indigenous Foundation. Thank you so much, Francisco, for your answer. Now we're going to talk a little more about the FSC Indigenous Foundation. What makes FSC Indigenous Foundation different from other global platforms seeking to work with Indigenous peoples? Yeah, keep in mind that uh, at the beginning, we have talked about, about my history. So uh, my history, I, 
I just forgot to 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 mention that I have a, I am a I have a 52 years old. In, in my life is dedicated to to support my community, to support indigenous people, uh, organization in different parts of the, especially in Latin America, but also in Africa and other regions. So the experience that I have so far is that it's quite important if you want to support indigenous people worldwide. It's important to think about an indigenous lead organization, but uh, an indigenous lead organization. Uh, think about solution by, for, and with indigenous people organization. It's important also to think an organization to facilitate and promote space for indigenous people to lead, to lead since the step zero, any solution to safeguard the planet and the Mother Earth. The indigenous foundation is different because we want to facilitate, we want to facilitate indigenous lead solution by lead by them. We are here as an organization to also to facilitate cross-sector collaboration. In this, this cross-sector collaboration, we have uh, the intention to support and to create the enable condition for promote and scale up indigenous uh, based solution by leading by them. And finally, uh, it's important also when we talk about why the indigenous foundation is different to think about the challenge that we are we are facing all day, we have two two billion people with no access for to to save to save water now day. With the new pandemic cycle, we can anticipate the all, all the pandemic is is coming uh, soon as well. And also, we have the challenge for 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 think about the environmental degradation. We we are facing a situation that we continue reduction of the ice areas in the north, in the south, the south, we are going to have to create more and more threat to, threat to the planet. With also the increased temperature in the seas, uh, we c- could see that the, 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 the planet, the, the society, the global society, they are going to face some challenge. We are face regional, global challenge, but also this uh, regional and global challenge, they require solution at the same scale. That is the opportunity that the Indigenous Foundation came as a global indigenous lead entity. You are connected to our governance to other indigenous leaders in different parts of the world. The, the world. They represent and cover very much all regions of, of the planet. That's the uniqueness of the Indigenous Foundation. We are an indigenous lead entity. You are, we are created by them, you for them, you with them. You working with different actors who have the expectation to create solution to scale up and to protect it, to safeguard this planet for the for the new generation in the future. That's the the, the uniqueness that I can see uh, for for the Indigenous Foundation. Now that you talk about alliance and collaboration, we wanted to ask you about the FSC Indigenous Foundation Program. The FSCIF is implementing the Indigenous Peoples Alliance for Rights and Development IPAR program. Can you tell us a little more about this program, its approach, goals, and progress? Yes, yes. The the IPAR program, the Indigenous People Alliance for Rights e Development, I see as a an innovative model that we have the, the, the intention, the target goal to, to create the enable conditions to empower uh, indigenous people in the long term, it to, to, to give the, 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 the ability to, to manage the ter- their territory, to negotiate with different stakeholders, to develop different, different possibilities in terms of the solution, to implement that solution, it to create, it to get the benefits for the nature in different sides for them to achieve self-determination, self-governance, and also to promote the holistic way how they manage the territory. That's the target ambition behind this, uh, the, this IPAR program that we have on a uh, very important collaboration with the USID, and also with the Forest Stewardship Council, but also with co- the collaboration with the private sectors. How would be the way for us to achieve this target goal? The program has the ambition to provide the capacity uh, uh, 
develop development you provide training for for indigenous people organization in non-indigenous people organization to an, to enable them to 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 overcome to create to have dialogue with different sectors but also to lead different initiative but also we the, the program has the ambition to facilitate the space to promote political incidents and to influence national policy in line with the perspective the vision of the indigenous people but we also believe that just promote uh, to improve the capacity of the indigenous people organization no indigenous people organization and also to influence the policy is not enough it's necessary also for for us to to promote on new models of the indigenous economy and also to bring together the private sectors to work with the with the indigenous people on the ground that's the three pillars for the I, for the for the for the i pride program how would be the way for us to achieve that we are go, we are going to use is a five years program that we have intention to to implement it, 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 together with different stakeholders and we are going to 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 to, to apply three different approaches. The first approach is what we call indigenous program management approach. The idea here is again to, to, to offer the ability to support the, the indigenous people organization to growth in terms of the ability in different areas, but also the, the program has intention to work at the national level selecting different countries to, to, to implement. We just start the implementation in Central America, and now we are going to move to Africa. But also the key element for the IPART also is to promote collaboration. That's why we are now have an important collaboration with different UN agencies, organizations, including the FAO, UNDP, to have the, the, also the participation of the important uh, 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 NGO uh, and, and also to bring the private sectors to work with us to promote the, the, the ambition, the objectives, the key activities related to the IPART for the next couple of years. Thank you so much, Francisco, for your answer. It seems like this program will not only fight for indigenous people's rights, but also to spread information about the culture and practices of communities and indigenous peoples. Now, which are the main challenges indigenous organizations face in order to put those kind of solutions in place? So the main challenge that we, we, we are, the indigenous people organization worldwide, they are, they are facing is, uh, is the, the, the threats for their rights this is a key component. He also the the lack of connection with strategic connection, I would say, between the their expectation on the ground, and also with the national policy. They they have faced challenges also to access uh, financial support. As I mentioned before, one percent of the money that the the, the public and private donors they are put to support the implementation, the conservation, the protection of forests, and also with some ambition to promote community-based development. 1% only uh, the, the indigenous people organization on the ground they have access. But the key challenge that I think is related to the to the, the the gap or the lack that we have nowadays to for for using and apply and design innovative uh, financial mechanisms to support it to work in close collaboration with the, the indigenous people or organization on the ground. That's why the IPAD, I can see the IPAD as an innovative model, but also if you think the last COP26, uh, we have the, we had the, this uh, commitment for, from, for, from, div, from donors to, to, to provide financial, direct financial support to, to indigenous people organization of almost $2 billion for the, for the coming years. And that could be the, the initial start, the, the initial start point for, for them to access the money and then to face this different challenge that I mentioned before. Now that you have also talked about a very important point that is uh, government support, the FSC Indigenous Foundation has the potential to serve as an intermediary between governments, the private sector, and indigenous peoples. What do you think about it? How can you accomplish this? Why is this so important to the indigenous peoples and also the, the society? 
Yeah, as a there is no 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 single solution for us to 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 reduce the threats, also to safeguard, and also to scale up, and to support indigenous based solution at national, regional, and global level. So, um, no single organization also has the power, the financial. Uh, capacity to provide to support indigenous people organization and also potential partner of the indigenous people organization to implement potential solution led by indigenous people. That's why collaboration uh, among between different uh, organizations for the private sectors include the, the government, uh, but also think about the, the, the rules and the importance of having also the participation collaboration of the CSO and, and, and also the leadership, the strong uh, contribution and participation of the indigenous people as a portfolio for us to work together to achieve and to, to, to support to provide support to indigenous people uh, indigenous people organization. So the indigenous foundation, we are through the I part, we are work together, we are facilitate dialogue uh, between different organizations, include the private sectors, include the UN, include uh, uh, NGO, national, international NGO, to promote or to, 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 to design innovative way the, the different strategy for us to provide uh, financial and non-financial support for the indigenous people to implement their solution for them to achieve their self-determination in the long term. Something that is repeating in our conversation is that collaboration is key to understand the problems that indigenous peoples are facing and also can be the solution. Now, we would like to talk a little more about your career. What are your main learnings as director of the FSC Indigenous Foundation? So from, from my perspective, nowadays, uh, I think different sectors compared to, to 25 to 30, three decades ago, I think nowadays we have the different sectors, different stakeholders recognize the importance of the indigenous people the importance for working close collaboration, I would say lead by indigenous people to think about the solution for different challenges. The climate change, of course, is one of the most important ones. But uh, the, the lesson that I, I can see when I think about my history, for instance, uh, four decades ago in the Brazilian Amazon, I think the key lesson is that we are still need to improve the capacity of uh, indigenous people organization to have a more effective way to negotiate, to influence, to design, to promote, and to implement the different strategy solution that the for centuries and centuries actually the, the indigenous people has implement implement in different parts of the planet. But now the challenge is the lesson lessons that I can see is that we have the opportunity to scale up. To scale up it to use the indigenous based solution as the 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 unique space for us to think about the future of the planet to think about the importance of the indigenous people uh, as part of the solution. The key lesson for me also is that even though we have the strong participation, strong uh, collaboration of some national government, we are still have some challenge with uh, some countries, especially in tropical countries, that they don't recognize the, the importance and the rights of the indigenous people. And that could be the, the open door for us to fail. If you don't inc incorporate, if you don't recognize at the national, regional, and global level the importance of the indigenous people, we are going to have some negative implication to the national economy. Yet at the end of the day, we are we are going to, to have the possibility to say to see the planet with uh, uh, some potential risk, I would say, for the global society, the potential risk for the Mother Earth. Now that we are finishing your participation on this episode, what is your message for organizations that want to work with FSC Indigenous Foundation? Yeah, on this conversation, I, I very much talk about challenge. 
critical challenge for my future, for your ch future, the future of your children, your father, my mother, everyone. We are we are facing a critical challenge on this. Uh, no one could overcome this challenge alone. You know, only could create, I think, a feasible solution if you don't have the ancestral managers, the guardians of the planet together with us to design, to manage, and to govern uh, the implementation of uh, different solutions. The government, uh, they are key actors, but you should also incorporate the private sectors. Only from my view, if from my experience, from my history, the others, brothers and sisters worldwide, we only, only respect, recognize, incorporate indigenous people as part of the, the package of the different solution or the portfolio of the different solution. We could have win-win solution for our future. The lead by, if for indigenous people, the indigenous foundation bring three decades three decades of experience as part of the Forest Stewardship Council, working in close collaboration with different sectors, including company, with a strong commitment to the indigenous people, plus efforts to promote indigenous leadership, to promote uh, uh, safeguard, to promote co-creation solution, to support indigenous lead solution in one quarter of the planet. The indigenous foundations is with the able with the could could we 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 prefer to see ourselves as the space for us to 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 promote uh it to facilitate cooperation and dialogue to safeguard those territory and their people as a way to safeguard everyone in the modern in the modern nature that's the the the, the final mention that i i'd like to share with different organization it to say that the indigenous foundation is here we are open to facilitate it, to have uh, cross-sectors uh, dialogue on behalf of lead by indigenous people worldwide. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Francisco, for that message and also for sharing with us these few minutes and to get us a closer approach to the work of the FSC Indigenous Foundation. And these new programs are going to be something important in the fight for uh, indigenous people rights. Thank you very much. We invite you to listen to the next episode of Indigenous Voices, a podcast that highlights the perspective of indigenous peoples worldwide. Don't miss our next episode. Learn more about the FSC Indigenous Foundation and its work with indigenous peoples around the world through the website www.fscindigenousfoundation.org and its social networks, FSC Indigenous Foundation, in Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.